Today's date's March 24th, 2010, and uh, I have a new YouTube channel uh, called Sci-Fi Fantasy Books, and I've uh, done some interviews with some best-selling authors that I'm going to be putting uh, on the site in the next couple days, and hopefully this one as well. I uh, also have a new website uh, for my writing, uh, sciencefictionfantasybooks.net, sciencefictionfantasybooks.net. Okay, the first chapter is titled, Sing Muse of Hades and Light. In the kingdom of Rezia, inside the highest chamber of the Grand Minaret, ten-year-old Lucia looked out to see her father on the balcony. He lifted her newborn brother high over his head, and the masses, hundreds of feet below, roared with devotion. Father, what are you doing, she thought. Be more careful with our Savior. She glanced down at her naked mother, who rested in the birthing pool, with her eyes closed. Her mother's black hair clung to her neck, all of it soaked by the holy waters. You did it, Mother. I'm so proud of you. Lucia crept towards the archway, leading to the balcony, staying close to the walls of the circular room. She squinted, fighting the midday sun. Tears soaked her father's cheeks as he presented the pink baby to the faithful. Little Kayo's hands and forearms were tattooed naturally with thorny red and black vines, the holy markings of the hysum. Looking at Kayo, Lucia felt her spirit uplifted by a holy presence. The teachings were coming true. A hysum had come again to rescue all the world. Her brother would conquer Rezia's foes and bring the god's light to everyone. She skipped forward to participate in the royal scene and looked down at tens of thousands of pilgrims in the cream robes. She felt dizzy. The clay-white acropolis of the holy city sprawled across the desert plateau. Spiraling minarets, massive domed structures, and temples of the ten gods supported by grand columns. She clutched her father's ceremonial Kramos robe and looked down, uh, excuse me, and um, she clutched her father's ceremonial Kramos robe to steady herself. The fabric was bloodied. Her father had obeyed the scriptural commandment for Rezia's king to deliver the birth of his own Hysum son. She felt so lucky, knowing every Rezian alive would love to be in her place, touching her father's silky robes and the words of divine power stitched into them. Her father pressed the baby against his chest and pushed her backward with his free hand. He raised up baby Kayo and beamed his joy again. But in an instant, the rejection jarred her out of her bliss. Her father's face, with his distant brown eyes and his perfectly trimmed beard, always showed his serious nature. But as he viewed his son, so high against the masses, he was transformed, positively euphoric. He looked at Kaya with a true love, a look she had never, ever seen before. Her eyes darted from her father to her brother and back again. Father, your love for me is a lie. She dropped her head. Long vermilion hair fell around her face. She refused to cry, even though she could never allow herself to feel so loved by her father again. The crowd's chanting grew louder and louder. They called out in the old tongue, We love and adore him. Hava il zava haisum, hava il zava haisum, hava il zava haisum. Their hypnotic praying gave direction and clarity to her pummeled heart. The truth struck her as she watched the red-faced babe glowing against the sky. Her brother was a divine man. According to the war priests, a Hysum had not been born in hundreds of years. They said Kaya would be blessed with unparalleled spiritual gifts, including the ultimate proof of his godliness. He would be able to resurrect one person from death during his lifetime. I don't matter anymore, she thought. Her royal duty would be pure devotion to him. As his only sibling, she would always be there to provide him whatever he needed. All of her divinely given powers from the goddess Gisa would serve him alone. Just then, a deep voice coming from inside the chamber startled her. My dearest Lucia. The, the voice's tone made her stomach convulse. Sweet Lucia, come see your mother. She turned, tugged on her father's robe, and pointed into the sacred chamber. There's a man in there. The chanting of the crowd grew louder. Her father pushed her away again, harder this time. There's a man in there. Her father ignored her again, so she crept closer and peeked inside. A colossal man stood behind the now bloodied waters of the birthing pool, looming above her mother. The black of the man's bald head and muscled arms resembled the leather that covered him from thighs to shoulders. A single orange teardrop decorated the skin beneath his left eye. 
She recognized the face from scriptural stories, the black one, the god, Lord Donato. Your mother is going away forever. Donato crossed one arm over his chest and put his other hand to his jutting chin. Come, be with her while you can. Lucia breathed heavily, her mouth open. Her mother's face looked peaceful before. Now it was tortured. Father, come quickly! He continued to hold Caio in the air, but turned his head to look at her. Everything is fine, Lucia. Now there's a man in there. Mother needs you. He lowered the newborn to his chest and waved to the crowd. Father, listen to me. He strolled into the chamber, and all joy drained from his face. He ran straight to her mother, never looking at the black god. Her mother's blood was reddening the holy pool. Father, don't you see him? He put the baby down on the stone floor. Her mother opened her eyes, red with pain. Lord Donato sauntered toward the stairs that led to the attendants below. Her father put his hands to her mother's sweating brow and prayed to his god. Lucia yelled, Lord Donato did this to her. Get help, Lucia. Her father wouldn't take his eyes off her mother's sweet face. Donato stood in the archway between Lucia and the stairs, gazing down at her with stony eyes. Lord Donato is there. Don't you see him? Stop your nonsense. Get help, her father yelled. Her mother screamed. A harrowing sound Lucia knew she'd never forget. The baby cried. Her father kept yelling at her. She was paralyzed. Donato's voice boomed. I am sorry, Lucia. There is a reason for all things. She looked down to avoid the god's stare and squeezed her eyelids shut. She found the courage to look up again. The black one was gone. Her sobbing father pulled her lifeless mother from the pool and squeezed her vacant body against his chest. Lord Donato visited Lucia again that night after she drifted off to sleep. It was the first of many more nightly visits from the god and the onset of Lucia's transformation. Wow.